can relate to me and they can learn from me Like life is beautiful, don't matter what your burdens be And there's more to life than always chasing currency and What is up everybody, huge shout out to Sean Stacks For letting us use his song, Better Than Yesterday, for our intro Sean, thank you so much and keep doing what you're doing I will link all his platforms down below You guys go follow him, give him a shout out in your social media but without further ado, let's jump into today's guest, Riley Williams. What's up? I'm excited to be here, be on this podcast. I've listened to the first two. It's a great podcast so far. And I listen to podcasts all the time. So I feel like I'm qualified enough to uh, make that statement. Also, it's a dream of mine to be on a podcast. So you stepped out on your dreams and made this podcast and it allowed me to accomplish one of my goals in life. So something that I really appreciate. No problem. Anytime. If you guys didn't know, I also forgot to put... Riley has been the team captain for Wayland Baptist wrestling team for the last two years. Yeah, for the last two years. So he was actually a guy that beat me up all the time last year, kind of helped me mold me into the wrestler I was, uh, along with Mitch Napier. Shout out to that guy for always kicking my butt or my chest. But stick around for the podcast, guys. We're going to be talking about everything from being a collegiate athlete to helping others and to a lot of different ways of helping other people thank you guys so much for all the love you guys have shown in the past podcast and we're gonna get right to it riley my first question to you is how did you even start wrestling all right so i'm from oklahoma and wrestling is huge in oklahoma we have oklahoma state they've won more ncaa national champions than any other team in any other ncaa sport so wrestling is huge i grew up it was a big thing especially in the town i'm from and i saw i had friends that wrestled when i was a little kid maybe second or third grade and i just got into it because we had a really good youth program and i fell in love with it fast it's it's a great sport it teaches you discipline it teaches you self-control along with being athletic and just really gritty and hard working so uh, it's something i fell in love with from being a kid yeah man talking about hard work riley was actually one of the guys that has multiple times qualified for NAI nationals for wrestling so just to go to the national championship at any sport it just takes that hard work mostly wrestling being an individual sport masked by a team it just shows that dedication that that single wrestler has to have as all his other teammates so somebody can at least make it there but thank you so much for sharing that riley uh now that i've met you i obviously came as a freshman at wayland last year but let me ask you this question. What made you choose Wayland out of all the other colleges you, you told me that you could have gone to? All right. So this is just advice for anyone who's looking to go to college, who's going to play sports in college. You need to pick what's going to be the best college for you financially, as well as a fit academically. I'm a religion major, and this was the closest school I could go to, to, to my house, to my home, to my family, that I could still major in religion. So that was a huge uh, factor in choosing to come to Wayland. Also, I loved wrestling and I wanted to wrestle and I knew that I wanted to wrestle from the jump. Something I couldn't give up, something I wanted to pursue in college. And it helps pay for my school. Um, I get a scholarship and it's just been a blessing really to come to a school like this to where I can do what I want to do. I can major in what I want to major in and I can get financial compensation through that, through scholarships, because financial freedom is huge. Um, you hear like Dave Ramsey talk about it and everything. You don't wanna go to your dream college if you're gonna have to pay everything out of pocket for it. You wanna go to what's gonna make the most financial responsibility. And if you have to take the community college route so that you could afford it, there's nothing wrong with that. Financial freedom is huge coming out of college. So I would say look into those factors um, more than just like, oh, I wanna go to this school because it's really awesome and I've always wanted to go there. Be practical when you choose. And that's why I ended up at Wayland because it was all about practicality and it fit the best for me and it was the best financial opportunity. And I've I've been blessed to be here. I've been blessed with the people I've met and the opportunities that I've gotten. And I, I like it. So That's great. And I remember we've had a, um, a conversation before in which you told me that one of your mentors, I believe it was your high school coach, said if a kid wants to wrestle or play any kind of sport in college, there are many colleges out there and everybody can be a college athlete. You know, now whether they stick around on it, the four years or not, that's their decision. But the fact is that there are colleges out there that are willing to take people, you know, from I mean, even me 
from somebody that was one year wrestler in high school. You know, I was blessed with the opportunity to meet the Wayland Baptist wrestling coaches, which they took me in, gave me that opportunity to come out to college and wrestle, you know? So we talked about why you chose Wayland, right? Now, you already discussed how it's impacted you, right? Now, let's talk about the hardships you have gone through here, you know, whether it be academically or, you know, athletically, personally, all that kind of stuff. All right. So yeah, in your introduction, you talked about you wanted to make this podcast a real thing where you talk about experiences experiences that people have and learning things just about everything. And that's something I wanted to add before we get too far into it. Something that I've noticed about you being your friend is that you're going to be successful in anything you do because you love to learn and you're not stupid to be set in your own ways. You probably pick up things faster than anyone I've ever met. And that's something I've always admired about you. And that's why I think you'll be successful in anything you do, because you, you just learn in any situation you're in. And you're like a sponge when, when you come into new things, you retain information and you care about learning. You care about being better at whatever you do. And that's, that's a trait that I've learned from you that I, I admire a lot. Um, but going into hardships, the hardest thing is just the stresses of college and being away from your family. That's really hard because you're learning to be an adult. You're learning to be independent. You're learning to be a whole new person. And that's probably the hardest things I've struggled with is just trying to balance um, the stress of class, academics, good grades. Not to brag on myself, but I have a 4.0. I've never got to be in my entire life just because I prioritize school and I, I work hard. Um, so it's really stressful when you don't allow yourself to fail in that aspect and get anything less than an A in classes. And then just being, being away from family is always hard. Um, my mom babied me like no other. So it was hard to step out and uh, be on my own, but it's really made me into the man I am today, moving away from college. I know if I was at home, I probably wouldn't be as responsible or as mature or as successful as I am because I would have had that crutch of my parents. I could have just gone home every weekend, but being away from family and learning, developing into my own person has been the hardest things. And it may, it makes you want to quit. It makes you want to quit college. It makes you want to move home. Um, and personally, that's, Everyone has their own decisions. I don't hate on anybody. If they do decide to go a different route than college or this college in particular, everyone's got their own life. They got to do what's best for them. But for me, like I wanted to get that degree. I wanted to wrestle all four years. So like when I wanted to quit, like I remembered like why I came and what my goals are. And that helps me get through it. Successful people set goals. And that's why I've been able to maintain the path that I'm on. It's because my goals are important to me and I've maintained those goals and tried to accomplish those goals. Hey, that's awesome right there. That is the words of a dedicated man, you know? My dad always say, when you wanna quit, remember why you started, and you pretty much stated that. You know, shout out to my dad, and shout out to Mama Williams for racing you the way she did, you know? That's awesome, man. I, I truly do like your story because you're so real about it, you know? Uh, I, also, I appreciate how you said that I'm like a sponge, you know? I, I sometimes get a little too to addicted to what I want to learn at the time, right? Some people might see it bad because I drop everything else, but some people might see it as good. I see it as just the way I am, you know? Like, if I want to learn about, let's say, a certain, a certain military unit, I will obsess over it and research it and do all that, where other people might just ask about it. Okay, I got the basics of it, and I'll be good. I know in my religion classes, I've gone to you and asked you about deeper meanings of some things just because I want to know, like, why, you know? I haven't gotten out of that stage from being when you're a kid and you ask why all the time, you know? But I truly do like that. But now that we're, uh, that I just mentioned that, I want to ask you, man, when I started the podcast and I just said, you know, I want to help people, I, I thought about you and I was like, who better to have on the podcast? than someone who literally travels outside the United States, inside the country, and helps people get closer to God or learn from God, you know? Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your experiences on your mission trips? Let's, let's start with why you started going on mission trips, you know? All right, yeah, that's a great question. It's something I love to talk about, something I love to do. Um, I feel like as people, we are we are socially, um, we are social beings. We're meant to be interacting socially with that one another. We're meant to be helping each other out. Um, that's psycho psychologically, like we can't survive without other humans in our life. And as people, we're meant to help people. We're meant to help other people out who are in need. Is is the compassion that we have? And I'm I'm obviously a Christian, and when I read the Bible, um, I see that. That's what God does for us. God provides for us. God takes care of us. So I want to be able to 
be like Jesus, to be like God um, in my life. So I, I do these things to help other people out, um, out of a love for God and out of a, a love for people. I also just like, I just have a deep passion to help people because of that, you know, human social interaction. It's something that I'm passionate about and something that I want to do with my whole life. That's awesome, man. I remember last year going up to you and I was like, hey, Riley, you know, I really want to go on a mission trip, but I am still such a baby Christian that I feel personally that I should learn more before I go. And the first thing you told me was you don't need to learn more. You know, they teach you what to do, how to do it and how to execute it. You know, so that that's always been in the back of my head, you know, my, my little bucket list, you know, want to go on a mission trip, you know, and uh, of course, you know, financially, I might not be able to go over outside the country and all that kind of stuff. But I just want people to know that there are ways you can do it, because when I told you about that, you that's what you told me, you know, you said that there are opportunities for you to get a scholarship through different things if you want to touch up a little bit on that for me yeah so people want to help people and sometimes people are older and they can't go across the country they can't go across states to help people out and they will give you money in order for you to accomplish these things and it's not a selfish thing to ask i i personally i ask people for their prayers and for financial support when i'm going on mission trips because it's it's expensive to do it to go but you're making a world of difference for wherever you go and like it you don't have to travel to africa you don't have to travel to asia or anything to do like these things to help other people out i remember my sophomore year me and this dude named verley session we were just driving around playing view and we saw this homeless dude like digging in a trash can and like we both were like dude we like we got to do something about this so we picked this guy up and we're like hey like you want to go get some food you want to go get some pizza like you have those opportunities in life every day to just help people out, you know? And there's food pantries like in every city, you know? Like there's homeless shelters you can volunteer at. There's opportunities in everyday life just to help other people out. And that's something like, if you truly wanna understand like what it's like to love someone or what it's like to be a human being and have compassion, like do things for people that they could never repay you. Like that homeless guy, he could never find me in Verley again and say, hey, here's like that $10 you spent on food for me. Like, and there was no nothing in it for us. Like we literally bought a food for a guy we didn't know and I've never seen him since. There's nothing in it for us. It's all about the selflessness you feel, the um, just compassion you have for another human being, knowing that you you help them out, you know, um, and they there's no way they can repay you. Yeah, man, I like all the points you touched up on that. And before I go any further, I want to give a little shout out, special shout out to my mom, Maria Serge. Hey, mom, if you're listening to this, right, I just want you to know that you are one of the most selfless persons I know just because of the fact that you always want to help people, you know, although we, you've had some bad experiences in the past, helping others and all that kind of stuff. You've never stopped helping people. And this year she had this idea, right? And I don't know if you saw it on Facebook or anything like that. Uh, I call it the Serhe project, you know, cause I like to name everything with my last name cause it's so unique, but she literally decided, Hey, this year we're going to help. We're, for Christmas, we're going to donate it, right? We all hung out. We put together little baggies for homeless people and it had your essentials, just socks for the winter, a toothbrush, toothpaste, and a little bit of mints, you know, just, just something to help them out. Something to say, Hey, like, here you go. You're not alone. There's plenty of ways that you can help your situation out. But here's a little bit of love from somebody else, you know, whether whether they get they became homeless because of personal reasons or just because they just chose that life. You know, my mom wanted to do something just for that. So she did it. It was awesome. And it was an, a humbling experience, you know, and I truly do see what you mean by not having to travel out of the country for it. You know, um, I know you've been to a lot of different places though uh south korea africa kenya africa kenya africa and what other places have you gone to i've been i've been to um europe i've been to africa i've been to north america obviously i live here um asia i've been to all, almost all the continents almost all the inhabitable continent inhabitable continents um i've just been everywhere uh this summer i went to moldova which is in eastern europe and we went 
and we worked with um, people who were orphans, kids who were orphans that were either in foster care or were in like orphanage type places to be able to just like show them love and compassion and help them out. Um, we also distributed f- food to people who were like in far away villages, far from the city who couldn't get food as easily. Um, just things like that to help social work um, through a program called Children's Emergency Relief International. Um, and there's organizations like that all over the world, like UNICEF and things like that, that just go overseas and even in our own country and just help out people who are in need, especially kids. That's something I um, have a passion for because my mom at one point was orphaned. Um, So that's something near and dear to my heart is helping out children who are in situations like that. Because I know like if it wasn't for people who loved my mom and helped her out, like I wouldn't even be here. I wouldn't exist. So that's something near to my heart is helping out like orphaned kids and stuff like that. And that's awesome that you said that about what y'all did for Christmas. Like imagine if everyone would just do little selfless acts like that in daily life, in weekly life or every month. Like imagine how much better like our world would be if people just were selfless like that in in everyday life. That would be crazy. You know, like so many social issues wouldn't exist if we would be able to just do those things. Exactly, man. And touching up on my intro again, I'm going to put it out again in case people forgot, but I put out on my intro that my email will probably most likely be hooked up in the podcast page somewhere. And if they just ever needed anybody for them to listen to, you know, because not everyone can afford going to go see a psychologist or might may not believe in it, but if they just want to reach out to somebody for help, you know, dude, guys, I am always available and I will always make time. You know, I have already gotten people emailing me about it and I have told them I would make the time for it, which I have. I've already talked to two people, man, and their story is crazy. It's just the fact, the, the fact that just like you say, if people would do selfless acts on a daily, weekly or monthly basis, a lot of our problems wouldn't happen, you know, and I, f- I feel like one of the biggest problems right now is communication, right? Because I know growing up, for parents, kids might sometimes be the worst communicators ever. I know I was when I was a kid. I felt like I couldn't communicate with my parents. Well, my parents were actually like the most down-to-earth people now, you know, that I look at them through the eyes of a 20-year-old. I understand that more. But when we don't communicate, man, there's such a problem built up because it can go anywhere from, from assumptions that aren't true And people just make up in their own mind from not communicating to hearing things from other people and just getting upset uh, at one another for no particular reason or things that don't actually exist, you know? Yeah. But through these mission trips, you know, you do a lot of communicating. Uh, You communicate the word and I'm sure you make a lot of personal uh, connections with these guys and girls. But why don't you touch up on some of the things that you, you do on the mission trip, you know? All right, cool. So I've done literally everything um, you could do on mission trips. I went this summer uh, to Houston, the Houston area to help like rebuild houses and well, drywall houses, things like that, clean up from Hurricane Harvey to distributing food to people who are in need um, to sharing the word. And the model of missions that I personally think works is what Jesus did. Jesus would go to people and he wouldn't just be like, hey, you're going to hell if you don't listen to me. That doesn't work. That is never going to work. He would go and he would meet people where they were. He would meet their physical needs and then say, you know what? Like, this is the way it is. I will meet your spiritual needs as well. But first he hit them with like physical needs. And I think that's the way that missions has to work now. Like people aren't going to know who you are and they're not going to know your good intentions if you don't show those good intentions. So like little things like going to orphanages and running programs for kids in orphanages. Um, in those programs, we had Bible time where we, we shared the story of Christ. We shared the Bible with them. But first we had to break down those barriers by playing games, showing them love, um, just giving them that personal one-on-one time that they wouldn't have in a big like orphanage setting because of just the lack of people, adults who are there to care for them. And just like things like being able to rebuild someone's house and know like, hey, we're doing this in the name of Jesus. Like we're doing this because of our love for Jesus. And there's no strings attached. You, We don't go out on and do these things thinking like, oh, you have to come to church or we're not going to do this for you. It's, it's never about that. It's just we're going to go serve you. We're going to do what we feel called to do. And then we're going to tell you why. And that's that's the great thing about it. And that's what I think works personally in missions and um, just helping people in general. 
Uh, I think it's it's shady when there's a ulterior motive and you're just doing things because you you want to make them a Christian more than you want to help them and love them and serve them. Which, if you are a Christian, you do believe like you want everyone to be a Christian. That's just basic biblical understanding. But you can't force anyone to do that. It's their personal choice, and you share that with them. But a great gateway to do that is to show them that you're authentic and you really care for them and you're not you're not expecting anything in return from them. Yeah, man. And one of the things that I see or think about when you say that, right? I went to my fiance's church up in Amarillo and me and her volunteered to help pass out gifts to kids whose parents were incarcerated, you know? And man, she told me this. She goes, Oh, this is so awesome. Like, aren't you having so much fun, this and that? And I was like, yeah, you know, I am. But my tone of voice wasn't this with the same love and intensity as she was, right? So she was like, hey, how come you, you know, you're not super happy jumping up and down, all this sort of stuff. I was, and she said, are you not having fun? And I, I explained to her, I was like, yeah, I am. I just, I'm kind of more calm, you know? But after it happened, after I passed those gifts out and saw the smile on those kids, because those gifts said from dad, from mom, and th- those kids just getting so excited about it. Dude, that's where it hit me, you know? That's where the feeling on my chest hit me, and it just moved, and I was happy because, just like you said, I know God would do this too. God did this, you know? Jesus did this here that on, here on earth, but it took the visual for me, you know? It wasn't just the thinking about it, but it took the visual of seeing that happiness in someone that completely moved my heart. And I'm sure that's what you experience on mission trips too. You know, you always have great stories when you come back, when I've seen you and when I've asked you about it. But to end the podcast, right, I want to ask you one last thing. I want you to give give us the Riley Williams message to anyone out there who just has that desire to help people, you know, because there are people out there who's like, who, who think to themselves, you know, I want to help people in life. That's what I want to do. How do I do it? You know, I want, I want you to give them a message and advice, whatever you want to call it, you know, for them to understand what they can do in order to help others. So like we were talking about earlier, just the social interaction of human being, I feel like you can never truly understand what it's like to be a human being, a compassionate loving being that we are meant to be. Um, We have families and we love them. You have a kid and you just love your kid and they're a baby and they can't talk to you and you don't even really have a relationship with them. But, you know, like as parents love their babies, you know, because we're meant to be compassionate. We're meant to be helpful. Um, So you can truly never experience what it's fully like to be human without helping people out like that. So I would say first and foremost, you, you have to have that selfless drive. You have to want to help people secondly you there's never anything too small um anything you do is worth it whoever you do it for it's going to make their day it's going to make their week it's going to make their it potentially be the best thing that ever happened to them in their life so there's never anything too small you can serve people in various ways don't count yourself out because you think that it doesn't matter and it doesn't help and lastly just don't don't be lazy don't get into a complacent state of, oh, I'm going to do this in the future. Start doing things now that puts you in that position to help others. Start just constantly seeking out ways to help other people. And it becomes a, a habit, becomes a lifestyle. And once you are in that lifestyle, then like you'll truly know what it's like to experience happiness and joy. Like Fernando was just saying, like seeing that on their face, like there's nothing that could make me happier than seeing like that what I did affected another person in a positive way. Because many times as humans, like in as people, we do things to affect people in negative ways, whether we're negative attitudes toward people or we say things like mean to people, just not even realizing it. We affect people so negatively and like that, that's terrible and it hurts them. But like, what if you learn to do positivity? What if you learn to act positively toward everyone? Then those effects that are negative, that are so impactful will be positive and everything flowing from you is just positive and positivity. So make it a lifestyle. That's what, that's what I can say is like serve other people out of a lifestyle. And that's all the advice I have. Thanks, man. Any shout outs you want to do right quick before we, before we finish? Um, I just want to shout out to the people here at Wayland who have made my life great, made it bearable, um, even when it's been hard 
the coaches like Coach Meister, Coach Cook, um, all my friends on the wrestling team, all the great dudes that I met over this this time here. Um, shout out to my parents. I love y'all. I hope you listen to this, even though you probably don't know how the podcast app works. Um, and then one last shout out to my beautiful girlfriend. I know you're going to listen to this because you're always so supportive of me. Um, I love you and thank you for everything you do. And that's all I got. All right, sweet. Riley, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. This message is RJ will approve. Everybody, thank you so much for listening, and I will catch you on the next one. And for my negativity, it's got some hell to pay. Positivity, fill my future with better days. Always aim to be better than I was yesterday.